Hey everyone, I'd like to thank you for tuning in to another edition of The Prescription. It is your girl, The Hit and Lover, and I am here with the financial mind over the great, uh, the leader of the barbarian empire. I mean, he's got merch, he got Oba water. This man has a lot going on. Oba, how are you doing today? I'm doing all right today. Um, It's been a long day. <laughs> but it, it, we're, we're almost at the end of the day, you know, so we're trying to we're, we're trying to make the best of it. Tomorrow's back to more work. How's your day going? Hey, it's going wonderful, wonderful, man. As long as I get to talk to people and do what I do, I can't even complain, you know. I, Absolutely. I, I love what I do. Definitely, definitely. So I'm going to start off with the overwater. What made you go in into the water industry? Wait, hold on, hold on. I got the... Got to, got to show y'all. Oh, yes. There bottles. you go. Got to show one of my bottles. <laughs> All right. So basically what made me get into like the water industry is like um, I'm from Niagara Falls, New York. And being from Niagara Falls, New York is very, very, very high in poverty. Like there's nothing healthy for the kids, for anyone whatsoever. It's always everyone basically eating their dinners out of 7-Eleven, basically. Mm. And so my friend, he's a um, personal trainer. So we, you know, we try to get on our workout stuff like that. So he was talking about his nutrient plans and what he was trying, what he was trying to do about eating healthier. And I was a little bit heavier. I was around 300 pounds. So I'm like, okay, well, I'm gonna start eating healthier. He's giving me advice here and there. So when I got into cryptocurrency and when we, when we talk about that later, but when I got into cryptocurrency and stuff and I started making enough money, I'm like, okay, I want to get into a business. What do we need? Like what? And that's when we start talking about farms and we start talking about growing plants and things like that. And I was like, well, the beverage industry, uh, industry is huge. Like they come out with a new type of soda, new type of drink every day, all day. But when it comes to the water, it's either you're going to drink the low quality water or you see the high quality water is not really any type of competition. And we saw someone come into the space, which was a uh, liquid death. They came into the space and disrupted the whole space. And all it is when it comes to that type of thing is it's marketing. Mm -hmm. Can you market your water? Or can you whatever? Can you can you show what's different from yours? So what made mine different from everyone else is actually pure alkaline water, not the when they say it's alkaline water and then you do a ph test and it's not that and it still has some type of acidity no nah. mm -hmm. so that's what we end up getting into we end up um going through many many tests shout out to my guy um robert hasbrook he's a our, our scientist he's actually from um he's actually from the bronx and i want to you know i'm going to be black first you know us first. So the scientist, he's oh, angry. Hey. <laughs> he he was he he just like me. He was um you know a reformed um hood baby as we would say, and um he got it. He got into science and he became a real life certified scientist. And he started working on the water. I knew him ever since like 2010, and he was like, "Hey, bro, I see that you trying to work on a project. I want to help." So they gave him full access to a lab and. Once we start rolling out our marketing, we're actually going to show the process because people want to see. It. They don't want to be just told anything. They actually want to see the actual process. So we're going to show the process. We're going to show that I have all the videos already. So we're actually going to show the process of how this water is made, how we can take almost mop water and turn it into alkaline water. And the benefits of alkaline water is clear skin. It has rumor to be anti-aging, but we ain't gonna, we ain't gonna go into that because I can't I can't you know and um and also gut, gut health and people that are um familiar with Dr. Sebi and his teachings everything was off of gut health and if your gut not right then all the health problems start from there and that's exactly what alkaline water helps with and improves it, it creates a nice environment for your gut health and if you have good health it actually can, if you have actual good gut health it fights different type of cancers so that's what we're working on well what's already worked on is done so now we're going to be into mass production and um 
we just got to verify for Amazon so we can sell on Amazon. And okay. we'll be ready in the next 60 days. Okay, well, first off, congratulations for getting Thank that you. going. I'm glad you guys are able to not only just get it out, you're going to be able to get it out on a massive level to people who are not, you know, international, nationally, definitely with the Amazon. And I, I think that the idea of water, um, especially owned by us, is, is is a beautiful thing because, like, say, we're we're that's an underserved market period, especially for us to have water. And I know it's a lot of back and forth about alkaline water. Um, I actually make my own with uh with with different uh different fruits and um that I put in it. But I believe that everybody has to have you know needs to have a certain level in their body. And I did hear you say something when you were stating that you know when you were bigger, three hundred pounds. So what exactly did you do to kind of get down while you were going through your your health? Um, you know, uh, getting more healthier as you're going through this process of changing your finances, you're changing your health. You know, investing. You know, different things like that. Okay, the first thing I did to get my weight down was portion size. Like I could eat, I could eat a whole pizza like it wasn't nothing. <laughs> like, so I had, to, I had to control. I didn't start doing portion size. I had to, you know, you don't do it instantly. It's not overnight. So I had to take it day by day. So instead of eating that whole pizza, we're gonna eat a half a pizza today. I'm gonna be hungry tomorrow, but we're gonna eat a half a pizza. <laughs> we're gonna eat a half a pizza, and then we're gonna keep we're gonna keep bringing it down. We're gonna keep bringing it down. So. As I started cutting the portion size, then I started worrying about exactly what I'm eating because, it, like I said, it's not overnight. So, yeah, I was cutting the portion down, cutting the portion size down, but I was still eating basically the same thing. I was still eating chicken wings and stuff like that. But instead of eating twenty, I'm going to eat fifteen, and then I'm going to go down to ten and things and things of that nature. So I cut that down, and then. Then I started worrying about what I'm eating healthy. I cut out sodas. I, I was never really into candy at all, but the main thing I had cut out was sodas and any type of sugary desserts or anything like that. And that was the main thing. Once I started cutting that down, the weight just started falling off. Mm -hmm. And then I started and then I started exercising because now I'm light enough to where I can go, okay, I can do a push-up or two. And then and then, and then, then I started building there. <laughs> I feel you. And I, I like how you said that because I know a lot of people and we're finna get into the finance side of, of the barbarian empire, but I, I like to touch on the health part too, because this is the prescription. So we're trying to heal all parts of us. Um, a lot of people think that, you know, it's just what you eat, but a lot of times it's how you eat first. And a lot of times, just like you say, cutting back on sugary things, cutting back on sodas, um, a bunch of teas, uh, uh, you know, fruit juices and some that, that have extra added sugars and just controlling how much you eat like that can drastically affect your weight as well as your health and your energy for you to be able to go ahead and start exercising and then you can kind of control what you would because i know i sometimes get questions asked like how do you stay a vegetarian and it's like well it was a process it was literally a two-year process that i never knew i was going to end up on but it was started off with taking out pork and then it took out all you know red meats and then it went to pescatarian then you know it was it was a gradual steps and i like how he kind of described that so now i want to kind of want to get into the finance the first question i want to ask you why do you call it the barbarian empire <laughs> well <laughs> Basically, from my past, they like man, like because I'm I'm over I'm over six feet tall. I'm being over six feet tall at, at the time. Being over six feet, two hundred and fifty pounds. At the time, I had came fresh out of prison, so you just you know, <laughs> and how, how I used to how I used to act. So they're like, man, this dude barbaric. This is uh, whatever. So when I made the life change, when I made the life change, I'm like, okay. How can I turn this into a positive? And that's where that's where at first it was um it was barbarian season. And I just, when I was doing music and stuff, I've always said, man, it's barbarian season. And then I'll start rapping. And then I'm like, okay, we gotta think big now. We gotta, we gotta can't we can't just be doing this. That's something when a, a OG told me, he said, make sure you live you live long enough so your mind can change. Because, you know, when you're young, you're 25 years old and this and you're in your 20s, you don't want to hear nothing. You don't want to all of that. So then 
I always used to remember that. He's like, man, you when you when you get old enough, you're gonna understand. It's gonna change. One day you're gonna wake up. And one day I kind of just woke up and said, okay, what you doing here, man? What, what's going on here? Like, is it gonna be the same thing every day? Is, is this what you're gonna do? Is this when you when you're looking on the internet and you seeing these people take vacations over here and all this, but you want to go out and be on the corner? Like at some point you're gonna get tired of it. And I got tired of it, so I started thinking bigger. And I just did a name change. Like, okay, what can we do instead of a season? What can it be? Okay, it can be an empire. Think bigger. You, you're, you're the, you're the king of what you do. And my other nickname is the king of nothing. And when I got that, and when I got the nickname of that is from the city where I'm from. My city where I'm from is less than forty thousand people. Ain't really nobody there. And I was so popular at the time. People were like, nah, you, you run the city. You're the king of the city. I'm like, dog, I'm the king of nothing. This don't even matter. People don't even know my city exists. Outside of people, like when I say Niagara Falls, all they think of is the water. They don't know it's people living here. They don't know that the poverty rate is over 70%. They don't know any of this. <laughs> they don't know that it is only 8,000 black people secluded to one side of the town. And that side of town, that's where they did a radiation um, dump site from the, um, from the atom bomb. And we had the love, we had the love canal thing and like and people are growing up with disabilities and all the different type of stuff that's going on over there. So I'm like, dog, I'm the king of nothing. Like it, it means nothing. This this means nothing. Ooh, I'm the man in a city that doesn't matter. <laughs> so that's where the whole king of nothing came from. And then I just I'm just changing it to a bigger positive thing. And I was on Facebook like everyone else. And when I learned Facebook was localized, I'm like, okay, I want to get my message out there. I want to become bigger. I want to whatever. So I start using these other platforms and start spreading out even more. So now I'm building my empire. I like that. I like that. I like that. And and you just dropped a lot of information. I didn't know any of that about Niagara Falls, New York. Yes. But I, that that's that's tragic and it's it's crazy. But I, I definitely understand the mindset and how to change. And so my next question would be to you. I know digital currency is like the is the next wave, the next wave of where we're going. We're going, we're going, we're going paperless, guys. Like for real. So, for for can you first explain a little more about digital crypto, um, um, cryptocurrency, as well as for those who may know a little bit or may not know, how do they begin? What how do they start? How do they dive into the world, the huge world that's emerging of digital cryptocurrency? Okay, the um, okay, so cryptocurrency and blockchain tech are two different things. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't understand that. It's two different things. So a cryptocurrency is it's just the money of the internet because everything is going digital. And what blockchain tech is just the transaction. It's just a list of transactions and open ledger that all of us can see. So once again, cryptocurrency is just the money of the internet, and blockchain is just a list of transactions that you can see that are connected to each other that cannot be changed. So the easiest barrier entry into it is Bitcoin. When Bitcoin was made, Bitcoin was made in uh, 2000, between 2007, 2008, after the financial crash. And what happened there was they were lending out too much money and they couldn't hold it and the whole market crashed. So to hold some type of value because they used to have to transfer money physically to places. So if they wanted to buy, if a, if a, if a country wanted to buy oil from another country or they wanted to buy a resource from them, they had to literally physically go fly that money over there. And most of it was done in U.S. dollars. So they say, okay, why don't we have a digital currency? But there's a way that we have to create value because, you know, with the internet, somebody can just code their own dollar. They can just type up their own dollar and print it. So they made it to where it's a limited number, which is 21 million. And with that 21 million, you have to mine it. And what mining is your computer has to solve extremely difficult math problems in order to be rewarded some of this token. So that's why they call it mining. And the less that there are, the harder the math problems get, but those also the bigger the reward. So, with it only being 21 million Bitcoin, that creates scarcity. And something that is scarce creates value. So if you had like a, if you had a million phones, you won't care about losing a phone if you had a million phones. But if you only got one phone, you're going to care about losing that one phone. 
that means it's more valuable. So that's the same concept that's going on with cryptocurrency. So some of these cryptocurrencies, well, all of them actually, they all they all have scarcity. So the less that there are and the more that someone has and the more that is needed, the more the more value goes up. So as far as what actual cryptocurrency is, what I said is money of the internet. Now we're going into things called metaverses. And what metaverses are just computer worlds, basically the matrix, as you would say. We're we're having computer worlds. We're we're seeing games come out. This is where video games in real life are going to be intertwined. So we're seeing things come out where where let's say if you're on social media, you're on Facebook. Facebook is its own community. It's over a billion people that use Facebook. So Facebook can come out with their own money to where, you know, when you're using the Facebook marketplace where you can buy the Facebook token to purchase things off of off of there, off of Facebook. Mm-hmm. And that money is only used in that community and in, in that type of world. So that's where we're going to start to see. And we saw with uh, Telegram, which the CEO just got arrested uh, a few days ago. That with Telegram, he created his own coin called TonCoin. So people can pay for items that they were getting from Telegram. And the power that be, they don't like that. Like, hey, you're creating, you're creating your own, you're basically creating your own country at that point, but it's digital. So that's basically what cryptocurrency is. It's just the money of the internet and whatever site that you're using is basically going to be considered a country, a territory at that time. And when countries and territories, they have their own currency. So currency of the internet. I got you. I got you. So Sorry, I'm long winded, <laughs> <laughs> but I have to, to break down every single piece. So it's understood. And, and I understand that because it, it, it is a lot. It is a lot. It can be simplified, but it takes a minute to kind of bring it back together. And I think you, you gave kind of the best thing where you're basically saying like with the scarcity of it, um, there's caps on it um, and it becomes valuable because the more you have, but the less there is, the more valuable it is. But basically at the end of the day, it's like, it's, I guess for, for, for someone who may not understand, it's almost like having a credit card and you're using it, but you actually, it's digital currency because it's it digital is currency. Cause everyone's like, using cash app, Venmo and all that stuff. We're, we're basically digital. I have I don't know the last time I even used cash. So like, <laughs> carry cash. Yeah. So the, so the easiest barrier entry for our communities mm-hmm. per se is, um, cash app and cash app did that on purpose. They did that intentionally with the help of Jay-Z and Jay-Z. He hangs out with the guy that used that uh, created Twitter. Um, I can't think of his name right now, but he owns Block and Block owns Cash App. And they worked together and they created their own foundation. And now Bitcoin is available on Cash App. And most of our community uses Cash App. So all you have to do is that money that you got in your Cash App, all you got to literally just press exchange and you have Bitcoin right then and there. It's, it's it's accessible. They're trying to get it to people, and people are scared of it. And that's that's what I'm tired of with our people is things that we don't understand. We're scared of it, or we don't use it, or you know, we say, "Oh, that's for those type of people." No, no, no. This is for us. It's a new, <laughs> yeah. It's a it's a new it's a new system. The new system is changing, and we can't be late. We're late to everything else. We can't be late. It's still okay. early. And I agree. And it's too many people um, that look like us that are now trying to educate others on how to get ahead, because this is an opportunity for us to get in on a lot of things now. And it doesn't take a lot to get started. I mean, it does take research. You do have to, um, you know, know what you're doing. But like you say, you can get into um, Bitcoin is simple through cash. out. But the question I will ask you is because some people may say, oh, well, I don't, you know, you can buy fractional shares for people who don't know fractional shares means like Bitcoin is like, I think it's trading. It's like 60 some thousand right now, but you have $200. So you're just buying a portion. You're not actually buying a whole Bitcoin, but you still get money um, as it goes up. So my question to you is, is it too much? Is it too big now to actually make money off of Bitcoin ver- um, with it reaching its peak soon or should it just be to get in so people can learn and then they move their money into other crypto with other um yes so basically it's going to become the same as forex markets so right now 
you have to have a basis. So the basis is going to be Bitcoin. Bitcoin is going to be gold. What gold is now, you know, gold is the basis for all our value of money outside of the United States because the United States got off the gold standard in 1971. So basically our money is just paper and we're just believing in it in the United States. And it's basically, it's backed by the power. Yeah, it's backed by the power of war, if anything. But we're not going to get too deep in that. But, yeah, we're not going to uh, go that rabbit hole today. <laughs> but as far as, so when it comes to Bitcoin, Bitcoin is definitely projected to do over millions of dollars for a coin. And we're def, we're below 100000 So what it's going to do right now is it's hedging against inflation, meaning that it's going to beat out inflation. Meaning if inflation is going up this percentage, the amount of money that you're going to make on your interest by holding Bitcoin is going to be greater than that. Because right now people are losing money in their 401ks. You can look at your account right now. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. You can look at your accounts right now and see every. <laughs> yeah. So right now people are like, dang, we're losing money off of that. Where can I put my money in a safe place? And now it's going to be into cryptocurrency right now. Bitcoin being being a standard. And Bitcoin being the only thing that's hedging against inflation right now, I think that's I can't give you know investment advice, but mm-hmm. but that's where the money is growing faster than the actual inflation. So this that's going to be your new savings account. That's why they're adding Bitcoin ETFs. So they're adding bitcoins into your four hundred one ks so that your um so that your money can beat out the inflation, and that's actively happening and it's more that's going to happen in september where a lot of these things are going to go into motion yeah and i i i I wanted to touch on something you said because i know a lot of people either save in um regular savings accounts if 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 you're more um, financially advanced (laughs) um you're more financially advanced you might use high end or some people just save in their closet like or the backyard so like you mentioned bitcoin um we again, we're not giving you know investment um, strategies, but is that something that might be uh, alternate to hold and to actually gain more with your money by leaving it sitting in Bitcoin versus just the strategy of just putting it in a savings account and maybe getting one percent? Yeah, ab- absolutely, absolutely. Because right now, even Coinbase is even offer offering a higher percentage yield on just holding USDC, which is US dollar coin. They're offering a higher yield in banks right now, and that's a cryptocurrency platform. So, of course, because now the big usually when they what they say when it comes to money is follow the money, you find the truth. Mm-hmm. When you see every single major bank, JP Morgan and uh, Wells Fargo and Chase and all of this, when you see them saying, "Hey, we need to have Bitcoin ETFs for your four hundred one k." That should let you know this is where the money is going. And they're fighting hard to make this happen. And they're going against the SEC and lawsuits and court dates so they can make this happen. That should let you know right now where the money is going. It's it's so obvious at this point. And I agree. I agree. I know. And it's quite a few of them. I mean, XRP then has several lawsuits fighting with the SEC trying yes. to get there. It's, it's a lot. But that goes to show you, like, when people, when they're fighting, like he said, when they're fighting that hard, that means that is part of the, like, they, they wouldn't be putting in so much energy and effort unless this was something that's going to be the standard moving forward. But you did touch on USDC. Um, so could you kind of explain USDC? And um, also my question would be because. I know I hear a lot about the potential of USDC becoming like more like the social credit. Is that something you think is going to happen? And if that's so, should it be something we should avoid? Or is it something that, you know, you can kind of have in your, your grouping or. Okay. So, okay. You had, there's, there's something called stable coins. Mm-hmm. Stable coins are tokens or cryptocurrency that are pegged to the U S dollar, which is, going to be a dollar it's not going to go up it's not going to go down it's going to stay a dollar so what usdc and there's also usdt yeah usdt which is us dollar token um they're basically going to be the new digital dollars and there's supposed to be another coin i don't know i think it's supposed to be like is e-cash or something like that we don't know what's happening with the future of that but we, we think e-cash is going to be also a um a stable coin and a lot of other tokens are coming a lot of other um, companies are coming out with their own stable coins which is paypal they already have their own 
um, Ripple and XRP. They're actually coming out with their own. They actually announced that um, last week that are coming out. So basically, so basically, these are going to be the stable coins. These are going to be the dollar that they're going to give you. So for the people that are not knowing, there is, you know, um, there's probably most likely going to be universal basic income. And that's going to happen due to the fact of AI and automation is going to start taking jobs. So you're going to get a, something called a CBDC, which is a central bank digital currency, which is going to be from the central banks. And they're going to give you uh, money at the end of every month or every two weeks or whatever they're going to give you, like how they tested it out with the uh, $1,500 to stimulus checks. That was just a chance to see what people are going to do with their money. What's going to happen? So all they can do is just type up. They could just type up money and just give it to you straight up. And it'll be it'll be airdrop right into your wallet. You wake up and you know every every Tuesday at nine o'clock on the dot that you're going to have it. But that where a social credit score can happen. Because let's say, let's say they could say, hey, listen, you got to spend this before the two weeks is up. And because it's a digital currency, it can it can actually be programmed. It can be programmed to do anything. So they could say, hey, well, we have a business deal with Facebook. We have a business deal with Facebook and you violated Facebook terms of service. You said something you weren't supposed to say and you were blocked from three days. You were blocked for three days off of Facebook. OK, we're going to deduct a hundred dollars like a t like a ticket. <laughs> like a dick, we're gonna deduct a hundred dollars. You're not whatever, and, and that will happen. It's not an if, whatever. Some people say, "Oh, well, it's uh, you know, this can be conspiracy theory. This can be whatever." Nah, y'all yeah. done seen what Facebook already done did to y'all already. Y'all done seen what the old Twitter done did to y'all already. Y'all done seen what IG do to you if you say certain certain thing. But all of this yeah. is going to go hand in hand, and it, and it, you see it where they. What they call it's called deplatforming. They're deplatforming people that quote unquote tell the truth or you know, and they Speak can do yeah. yeah. So you get a speeding ticket, it can automatically be taken out. Yeah, they don't you might not even know you got a ticket. You might you're like uh <laughs> you exactly might, they'll be able to do everything yeah, like stop, the stop camera. Yeah. yeah, it's your stock camera. So when you expect in that fifteen hundred or two thousand dollars. In the um in the beginning of the month, and then you look and be like, wow, I only got nine hundred dollars, and let's tell you negative this because you did this, negative that, negative, yeah. Or they can program it and say, hey, listen, it's like like food stamps, like how you only could buy certain things with food stamps. You can't buy everything else. So that is literally going to be that. I mean, they do it already with food stamps, so they already let them know they have a, a they already have a proven um. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? They already they, it's already it's already proven that they can't do that already. And yeah, it's, why well, why would they not do it with this? And it's very easy because now it's just straight digital control. Exactly. And like say it's got a proven track record of working, and not only that, it can also dictate they can see what you buy, they can see your your it tells so much about you, and you have no idea what they're gonna be using that information to do or yes. how it can handle us moving and forward. And from me being in me being certified in uh cybersecurity, like these people know everything. <laughs> everything people be thinking like people think they love, they don't know this, they know everything. It's so bad. These algorithms are so good to the point that when you say, Oh man, uh oh, they're listening to my conversation because you'll see an ad. For what whatever you was talking about, don't their day is it's to the point that it's predicted because they know how many times you looked at something down to the millisecond of okay, you, you could be scrolling and you might look at an orange car. Okay, well, let's show them orange for the next few seconds. Okay, now it's orange this, but we really want to sell them this this um advertisement. They paid us more money to sell orange t-shirts. Okay, let's start showing him orange t-shirts passive aggressively. Let's show let's show one of their friends. A old picture from two years ago wearing an orange shirt. Okay, let's do that. And it, and it really works like that. And that's how they get you to consume, consume, consume. And I'm like, wow, this is, for me being in cybersecurity, I learned how the technology work. And then for me going to, I went to Stanford University in product management. Now I know how the advertising work of how they do it and why they do it. All of this stuff, this world that's around us, is nothing but ads. That's it. Exactly. Ads. Everything's an ad. Everybody trying to tell you something. Buyers and sellers, and that's how the world works. Nothing else. And and I I agree. I agree. And because you know I don't even have Siri on on my phone, 
but sometimes I could be talking, I pick my phone up and it's actually whatever I was just speaking on is pulled it up, but I didn't ask my phone too, because I specifically have it turned off. So like say, um, everything around us is tapping into what we're doing with team because all it wants to do is sell to us like that, that, that we're consumers and they want us to consume. And I wanted to kind of ask them, um, about ISO, uh, was it ISO 20022? I know those are like kind of like the property real estate. I want to kind of touch on that to kind of explain exactly what that is and how that's going to be integrated in moving forward into the digital cur um, cryptocurrency. So those tokens, the ISO 20,022 or whatever, people call it so many things, but um, those tokens are basically the messaging system behind the main ecosystem we would say more or less of a governmental level or corporate level um ecosystem of cryptocurrency so you're gonna have um xrp which is going to be the messaging system or programming between corporations and countries so where countries can you know send money to each other for trade then you'll have xlm stellar which is short for interstellar which when we become interplanetary that we can send a Hey, hey, bro! On uh, on, bro, bro! In District Thirteen on the Moon, he need thirteen dollars, and you can send it to him through the satellite through through Stellar. But they're also going to do personal money. They're also going to be the messaging system behind personal money transfers. Um, Western Union MoneyGram. They already had those deals for like five years already. So, um, and then you're going to have IOTA, which is um, for the Internet of Things. Internet things meaning basically, you know, your, your watch or random miscellaneous things, the speakers, things that hook up into the internet, and that will be on a blockchain. So they're going to they gonna know what song you're listening to, what time you listen to it, how often you listen to it, what mood you like, and all that. It's all for advertisement. Um, they have, um, I can't name all of these off top, but um, I, got you. I, I think Hedera, I think Hedera has craft. I think, I think every time the blockchain gets crowded up, Every time a blockchain gets crowded up, it actually speeds up the transactions. So everything can be um so everything can go through. Uh you have AMP. AMP is for credit card systems. Well, a lot of people don't know when we think we're sc um scanning, um swiping our, our credit card or whatever, we thinking that transaction is instant, but behind that actually takes three days. Somebody on the other end actually has to approve that. But all it does is it reads, okay, this person has 300 in their account. They just pay two fifty. Okay, we'll, we'll let them. We'll let them buy this. But that actual money does not get into the to the banking institution account for three days. So anyone that has an online store, you know that when you <laughs> you'll know from Stripe that it takes three days for you to get your stuff. <laughs> so AMP solves that. It doesn't instantly. It does. A, it does collateral pay already. So it goes straight from your account to them. And then you have um, Algorand. I ain't, am I going through? Yeah, I'm going through all these. Dang, I remember. Then you have you Algorand. Hey, <laughs> <You're laughs> I'm just. <laughs> hey. I you in the zone. <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then you have Algorand. What Algorand is going to do is take old companies and be able to bring them onto the blockchain. So they're going to be able to help help these companies and corporations scale. And um, XDC is the one. XDC is what's going to tie all of that together. Every it's going to be a messaging system between all of those are tied together. I know I'm missing some tokens, but that's basically what that is. What the ISO twenty thousand twenty two is. It's just basically all of these working in conjunction with each other to make sure we have a smooth operating system. A lot of people don't understand our system is broken. What well, you, you do understand the system is broken, but you don't know how it's broken. And the way our, our system is broken is because one system can't talk to the other. It's like, you know, when you, you ever been to a hospital and once in one city and then you try to go to, I don't even say one city, you ever go to one one doctor's office and then you go to the next doc, doctor's office and they have to request your stuff or you have to bring the papers over and all that because they're on two totally different systems. Now, if it's on a blockchain, all that be tied together. And anyway, to, all they got to do is pull up your name and then they find whatever medical records. So we have a we have a breakdowns in communications. That's why we think our life is instant, but it is not. We're, we're by far not instant. So we have breakdowns of communication in the ISO 20,022. It's just what ties all our communication together. We're, we're going to make us 
essentially one world and for you know the conspiracy theories new world order <laughs> one world government <laughs> and, and that's what's happening it is happening in our faces it, it really is and and and, and it kind of just sum it up like you say basically iso 2 was it 20022 basically streamlines everything it's making everything more streamlined more seamless so and, and with us moving forward I, I my next question is how is ai help um changing finance and um digital crypto moving forward but how can it help us as far as um either in on the investing side or the mindset side moving forward to to become more um financially prepared for the future using ai okay for artificial intelligence eyes everybody please don't be scared of it it's um it, it has yeah. some scary, it's, 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 it's here it's already here it's like Yes, there are going to be some scary things, and you know, just like with anything, people are not going. To, some people are going to use it for evil, and mm -hmm. other people want to use it for good. But you have to look at it as an, an, an advanced series. So the way it's going to help society, and when it comes to the blockchain stuff, is imagine having a million news. Mm -hmm. That's it. Like it's just a million news that can work that can work on a on a computer. So as far as like trading, if you're trading and you have a trading bot. You can use a million news to get into a position that you normally would miss if you like, let's say, if you're trying to trade something at 3, 3, 53 in the morning, you not telling until you sleep, but the AI can do it for you. Mm -hmm. And it can do it a million times at once for you. Or, um, and it's going to be a part of the automation. It's going to tie the automation together. So when you have these AI computers basically taking over people's jobs, you're going to be able to invest in these AI computers on the blockchain and their work output is going to be on the blockchain so if computer one two three um made ten thousand can <clears throat> ten thousand cans today you're you will receive the benefit from investing in computer one two three you'll you receive the benefit from that so this is also a good chance to invest in artificial intelligence because it's going to take your if it's good it's definitely going to take your job it, it's going to the point that where they're about to start doing legal proceedings with an AI judge and AI jury, which is very dangerous. Wow. <laughs> which I is very know dangerous. that one. That's, that, yes. that, that's scary. Now, that's and scary. <laughs> very dangerous. And it can be lopsided because they're working with something called LLM, which is large language models. And large language models, they're only limited. They're limited to the information that you feed it and they can feed it bias information so they can so, feed it Go ahead. i'm sorry to cut you off i just want to ask you a question real quick do you think they're going to stick with ai or are they going to try to use agi as the judges agi is what they're scared of because agi I can think for itself <laughs> yeah, okay. so they're trying to find a way they're trying to find they're trying to do something that they that they know they can't do is they're trying to make agi bias and AGI has already discovered, as we saw with Elon Musk, he was saying that uh, certain, he said a uh, competing company, he said that their, um, he said open AI specifically was racist because, was racist against white people because of um, when it discovered the information, it discovered the atrocities they were doing. What they did in Africa, what they're doing in the United States and Jim Crow era and all this stuff. So, even in Roman times, where it, was, where it was saying about you know the people in that area in that time were darker skinned people, and then you're like, oh, it's racist, so it's just making everyone black. Um, in Africa, um, wouldn't people <laughs> want the people be darker? <laughs> and he was like, well, I'm because he because he, he tried to use the thing because him being South African and every, and people that know the history know that South Africa was invaded by the Belgians, and that's why there's a lot of Caucasian people in. <clears throat> Well, we we're not even going to use the word Caucasian because the, the Caucasian and the, the Caucasian and Georgian, the Caucasian and Georgian people are more of a, a fair skin, olive skin type of people. So we can't even use the word Caucasian. We just have to use the word European specifically. And a lot of Europeans were in South Africa, and he tried to use that. Well, I'm South African. How can this happen? And like, bro, you, you know history, and you know they're trying to erase critical race race theory to stop all of this and they're trying to erase it using ai and so people can use these um bias 
large language model. So when they say, oh, well, the computer must be right because the computer is smarter than human, where that bias computer is teaching you the same thing the books didn't teach it. Because, you know, once we got our school, we're like, hey, school didn't teach us that. I wish school would have taught. So now, now <laughs> they're just keeping that same thing going for indoctrination. And some people think it's a game and it's not. Mm-hmm. So when it comes when it comes to cryptocurrency, well, I don't know cryptocurrency. When it comes to artificial intelligence, make sure you use an open source, mm-hmm. an open source um, artificial intelligence, because that means everyone can share their information. They can scan the internet properly from all the information. So if you got them old family pictures and stuff, upload them. Upload them. They, they, they it's gonna be the internet is gonna be it's gonna read AI is gonna be able to read them. If you have history you want to share anything like that, talk about it on the internet. That's that's what the internet is doing right now. It's taking all our information. When this goes out, it's gonna it's gonna look at this and read this and see what type of information and and it's gonna compare this information of what I'm saying compared to other things to see if what I'm saying is right or wrong and it's just part of fact or fiction or things things of that nature so if you have a story if you have something to share if you have a truth to share share it use the internet how it was intended and that's why they're pricing our people out of this internet especially when it comes to content creation of this content creation thing now it's a thousand dollars for a phone like who who got a thousand dollars we we know what we know what it's looking like who got a thousand who got 1500 for a phone mm-hmm. you're telling you they're telling you, oh, well, now this camera costs this now and this. And they say, oh, well, it's accessible now. Now it's down to $2,000. Anyone can get it. Anyone like who? Exactly. Like, <laughs> I, I agree because, I mean, I'm just, I've just been looking at, like, content creating. Um, like, it, it's gotten so simple because of the internet and the technological advances. You can use a simple iPhone. But I remember they used to be giving away phones. Like, you could get a phone free. Or now the new phones, all of a sudden, now you have to pay full price for them. So I get it. Even with what's going on with TikTok and how, like, Instagram flags me, you know, for some of the things I post. I, I'm firsthand, so I have to be careful. You know, I'm trying not to lose my page. But I also feel like you have to speak the truth. So I, I completely get it, and I, I, I feel him, and I um, I agree with him in the fact of we have to, I feel like Cat Williams said earlier this year, 2024 is a year of truth. You have to speak the truth, but you also have to put this information out because at the end of the day, like he said, they're scared of AGI because AGI can't be controlled because it's telling the truth, not about, just about them, but about us. So the more information that we can put out, the more information we share. We didn't say just put everything out. Don't be, don't be putting all your business out. <laughs> yeah. Somebody definitely put some dirty draws on the internet, man. Yeah, don't be, don't, don't be you want, everything out there. You, you know want AI to see your dirty draws on the internet because you arguing with somebody? <laughs> you know? <laughs> I mean, because there's some people whose whole life needs to be pulled off the internet. But, yeah. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but but it, it does help. And I, I, I say, like we, he, we both said earlier, it's nothing to be afraid of because it's not going to change. We are already past that point. This is the we have moved into what the minds call the golden age. We're moved into the te- technological. Thing. We're we're out of industrial. We're out of that. We're in a whole new era. We're, we're, we're literally close to we're the into the. We we're, we're we're very we're like. We're literally a year away from the jets, and actually, like we're yeah. they they actually going to start coming out with the flying cars. They already. Showed them um, last year at CES, which is a consumer electronics show. They already showed it. They're like, hey, we ready for 2025. We just got to get the air rights and we're going to use AI so they all can fly in the lanes that you've been seen in the <laughs> in the movies, in the TV shows and stuff. They, they we, we hear it. We're, and the actual name to it is actually called the digital revolution. That's where we are. We're in the digital <laughs> revolution. So that's why this time period feels funny of like, what's next? Everything's down. And that's the time as history has shown, we're actually in the, the, the cycle of before the next revolution. And that's where we're in. We're in the digital revolution, the age of AI. We're going to see people richer than we have ever seen before. We're going to see trillionaires like it's nothing. Yeah. We're going to see we're going to see racial, we're going to see nations rise that have been down since the beginning of history. Like one nation that's coming up already is El Salvador. And the reason why El Salvador is coming up because they they um they're mining Bitcoin. They're the only nation that uses Bitcoin as the reserve currency, and the rest of the world is watching them to see what's happening. And their infrastructure is building fast. They have new bridges, 
all of this stuff. And he's like, he's using the government money to buy, I think he said, um, a million dollars worth of Bitcoin a day or something. It's just some, it's something, it's something crazy that he, that, that he's doing. So he basically did sweeping changes where he, um, he arrested every gang member in there. They, El Salvador is one of the most dangerous countries in the world. And now they are literally the safest country. And he just went and swept up. It, it may be considered unethical that he did, but he got every gang member off the street and put them all into one big prison. Like it's videos about it. Look it up, El Salvador maximum security prison, and and now they're using something called um they what they're using. So basically, for our nation, not our nation, for the world to heal, we have to become something called a type one civilization. And what a type one civilization is, is a civilization that uses all the natural resources to generate energy. And that's like, you know, using waterfalls, using steams from uh, gorges and thing, things of that nature. So what he did was use the um, steam from a volcano to generate power to mine Bitcoin and generate power for the city. And that's what's gonna that's what's gonna happen. We're gonna become a type one civilization, and a type one civilization is the civilization we see in the future. And a type two is when you use the power of other planets to power each other. And then type three is when you use, I think, galaxies to power is man. <laughs> that's a deep rabbit hole too. <laughs> but we're we're but we're becoming a, we're literally becoming a type one civilization in front of our eyes. That that's the name of it for people that that want to know of like harnessing natural resources to for energy. As um as we you know the mystery of the pyramids where they said the pyramids are power plants and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That means we were a type one civilization before, but something something went wrong in history. So. I, and and for you guys, hey, definitely um, chime in in the comments if you want us to come back and kind of talk more about the Titan One civilizations, because I really think that that's a deep, deep conversation about the natural resource. And I think that's something we definitely want to bring over back and maybe expand upon. Um, but I do have another question I want to ask you before yes. we start wrapping up. I know we have put up, we have told a lot of information. We, we've gathered a lot of information. So for people who are not in the financial mindset yet, not not necessarily literate um, in finances, or maybe they have bad credit right now, maybe they just don't have enough expendable cash, or maybe they, they're still scared of digital currency, what would be some things you would suggest to them to, to help them become more financially literate or, or less weird or be able to move in to those things so that they can start learning um how to have the correct financial mindset moving into the future um break break bad habits that that cost money you know everybody you know smoke a little something stop smoking a little something <laughs> you realize how much you realize how much money that you're spending on that mm -hmm. if you you know you like to drink stop drinking you got you got to start cutting out life habits because that's when you start you it's the mindset it becomes a whole mindset literally in for a better life. So you're going to start becoming healthier because you're cutting out everything, everything that costs money like this is usually like a bad habit. So people might smoke cigarettes, you know, cigarettes, I don't know, like $10 a pack. I don't know how much it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, 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 you stop smoking cigarettes that one in turn is going to be healthier and then you're saving money now you're saving money um whatever vices that you have you have to start cutting those off first because nine times out of ten or usually ten times out of ten that's what's eating up all your money is your vices the things that are usually are not good for you and everybody has some type of vice and your vice it's america nothing is free and your vice gonna cost money so that's the first thing and then the second thing is build credit, 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 credit. Cause that's all we, that's all this is. The United States is a debt based society. So the first thing you need to do is fix your credit. And they don't teach you about, about it in school for, for the same reason. They don't teach you about other things because that's, what's going to get you your freedom. As much as people, you know, say, Hey, we got to do this. We got to do that for freedom. No, it's about, it's about money. The game that they're playing in the United States is monopoly. 
that's the game that they're playing. Buy many assets so you can live passively. That's what's happening. I know you done heard it a million times from different gurus, and you're like, oh, man, they so corny. But they're not lying. It's a reason why they're pulling up and the stuff that they're pulling up in. It's a reason why they got the houses that they got and why they're smiling, their teeth white, and they're happy because, <laughs> because they change they changed their mindset. And, and it's a real thing as much cliche or corny that it is that's what's working i think he, i think a lot more people need to become corny <laughs> so they can get it together yeah. instead of trying to be cool because apparently what's cool is being destructive to yourself and being destructive to our community so i don't want to sound like you know uh, you know <laughs> motivational speaker and stuff like that but that's you literally you literally have to you have to change that so you have to get your credit correct you have to even when it comes down to your loans and the interest rates, a lot of people can't hedge against the interest rates. File for bankruptcy. It's okay. That's what it's there for. Bankruptcy is just, it's, it's ending the game and then you're starting over. People people are so scared of bankruptcy where they're like, oh man, this is, no, like, no, there's different chapters of bankruptcy. I don't know specifically what chapter it is, but file for bankruptcy, clear it all out, start from zero, and then you can build it again. And then you can build it, you know, more advanced through LLCs and stuff, paid X scores and all that. But that's something more more advanced. But if you start out in the beginning and your school loans are too much for you, file for bankruptcy. Get rid of that. Start from zero. And then start building your credit. And then when you get your credit, that's where you can get loans. And stop using your debit, your debit card. Stop. Use a debit card only to pay off your credit card. That's it. Use your credit card. These folks are giving you money. To use, they want to see how much you can you can borrow and how much you can pay back, and they're gonna make the limits bigger, bigger, and bigger. They'll offer you money. You'll get it. You'll get an email. You'll get a text. Hey, you want twenty five thousand dollars? <laughs> and then that's where you will buy. You will buy an asset that's gonna generate more money. They want you. They want you to build money, more money. They want you to get rich because that's how the system runs. People, the that's different between Republicans and the Democrats and stuff like that because. When they tell with Republicans, they want tax breaks because a lot of them are usually rich people. Because the more money that you get, the more tax breaks that they're trying to get. They're trying to get the loopholes and stuff like that. And sometimes people are like, "Hey, man, like, why is this black person a Republican? Why are they being Republicans?" And I wish somebody would be honest and tell them, like, "Man, you get enough money, you gonna figure out why. <laughs> you gonna you get you gonna figure out why." I mean, I mean, I'm I'm a felon, so I'm neither I'm neither. But I can I can understand, I can understand because it's a um, it's a social versus uh financial thing that's going on. It's a social versus financial thing because a lot of what Democrats do is they do they do a lot of social issues, you know, um, cops killing and all that different type of other stuff. And then what Republicans do, they do a lot of financial. Hey, we need tax breaks for this. We need that. So that's like the <laughs> that's basically the, the kind of divide that's going on. So, like I was saying earlier about the whole finance thing, and this runs off of the company. I said the company. Well, the United States is a company, corporation. <laughs> it runs off of money. So if you if you want these things to stop, if you want these, these cop killings to stop, it's about money. Sue them. Get life insurance. Enough of us die, and we got life insurance. Dumb life insurance. Like, hey man, we done paid out. 40 million this year, man. We in the red, man. Y'all, y'all better leave them folks alone. Yo, y'all finna start going to jail. Y'all messing up our money. It's a it's, it's about money. They not gonna stop because there's no there's no there's no punishment. Well, what we're gonna do, you're gonna be suspended. It's no real consequence. <laughs> no consequence whatsoever. We're gonna get suspended. Oh, they're gonna send me to the prison into the next town over, and that's it. Okay, the city, the city is gonna pay them, gonna pay them out a few million dollars of the community's money. Because that's going to be taxpayers' money. It's not going to be none of our money. <laughs> so they get to have their lunch. They get to have their uh, company vacation and all that still. So it's about everything. Is about everything. Everything. And I'm 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 gonna, I'm gonna say this every time I appear on here. It's, it's really about the money for real. And that's the only way you're gonna have changes. Is United States of America. This is what the rest of the countries call. They call this the bank. They call it the World Bank. That's what they call the United States, the bank. Mm -hmm. Come here for money and nothing else, and they send it out. That's it. So when you be seeing these people come over, these migrants, they're coming here to make money so they can send it back to their families and build them nice houses and neighborhoods and, and stuff like that. So 
once again, you got to got to get the money in order. That's it. And people like, you know, oh, people love money too much and this, that. And listen, this is, unfortunately, that's the system we're in. Yes, you can find peace. Yeah, you can do whatever, but peace ain't free either. No, it's not. <laughs> it costs. Everything costs. And, yes. and I, I, I agree. I agree 100%. Um, money, people say money is the root evil. No, it's the intention behind it. Understanding money is a resource and you can't live without, in, in this world without having money. And it's nothing wrong with obtaining abundance, attaining wealth. It's just hey, they was, was in the Bible trading goats and cattle. That's money. Exactly. That's currency. Exactly. Exactly. And he gave a lot of good, a lot. When I say a lot of good things, first off, the first one he gave, I wanted to touch on that really quick. Breaking those habits, breaking those vices. That includes people who eat out all the time. You know, that is a vice. You can cook. You'd be rich. surprised how much money you can save by cooking. Y'all people door dashing, y'all rich. <laughs> oh, I, I don't know how people live off door dash. It's like one meal, $30 rich. a door dash. Like, yeah, rich. <laughs> okay. Just imagine all that money. I, I, I would challenge anybody watching who's who isn't in the right financial state. One week, just just dedicate one week, pick one vice for one week, and put all that money to the side and don't use it and don't and see how much money you actually spend a week. Now multiply by all the things that you can cut out and imagine that's how you can start taking care of your finances you can start doing these things and like he said he gave some great ways with bankruptcy uh not using your debit card using your credit card versus your debit card and, and oh okay oh, that's what i forgot to tell you okay for the, a lot of us don't have credit so to get credit you can get a secure credit card so that okay. money that you save from your vice 100 200 dollars we'll say 200 that little 200 dollars take that and you can get a secure credit card so now you have a $200 limit and then you can start, you know, pay for your gas, pay for, you know, you pay your bills here and there with that $200. And that, you can start building credit from there. Yeah. And for those who don't know what a secure credit card is, basically secure credit card means you put the money in as a backing. And then once you keep paying it off, eventually, depending on six months, a year, whatever, they give you that back, but you're still building your credit in the meanwhile. So it's basically just to cover the, the fact that you don't have credit to make sure that you're going to pay them their money that's basically all that yeah and a lot of people a lot of people were like man i don't want to do that i want to you have understand the system that we are in this is the system we are in this is this, we're in, we're in capitalism y'all <laughs> this is the system so understand the system we're in free market free market enterprise and it's about to become global market in, enterprise very 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 soon once this cryptocurrency and everything connects each other, connects all of us, it's going to be a global enterprise. Learn the system. You have to. You have to. There's no way around it. You have to play the game. You don't. Know, he's absolutely right. And if you don't play the game, guess what? You get left behind. And, that, yep. and that's just the truth. And we're all here. So many, um, including Over the Great and some other people, we're here trying to make sure we don't, not only we don't get left behind, our kind don't get left behind because there's no excuse this time. So definitely the last question I want to ask Oba is, can you tell everybody what is your prescription to success? Discipline. Mm. My prescription to success for success is discipline because even if discipline is, even if you don't like it, you're still doing it every day. You're still doing it. You have to have discipline. There's many days of where I didn't want to do what I'm doing now. I didn't. I didn't even want to make the change because I knew I was going to lose friends because they they might not have changed their mindset to do something better. So I had to keep having that discipline. So make sure you stay disciplined. Do it every day. Whatever it is that you're trying to be great in, do it every day. And if you if you do if you put in more than 100 hours in what you're supposed to do, you're already better than 80 percent of the world at what you're doing. I like that. I like that. Discipline is, is a good one. And I remember hearing someone, it's, it's, it's a local rapper here, Mr. 10,000. He says to perfect some, you have to put in 10,000 hours. Mm -hmm. So that discipline, strive for that 10,000 hours, whether it takes you five years or 10 years, but master whatever you want to do. Like he say, discipline, work at it. And it can't help but succeed because you put it out into the, you put it out. So you got to hey, be successful. You don't, you don't even got to be the best, but you'll end up becoming the best. 
like like I was saying, you start off with the with the one hundred. The one hundred make you better than eighty percent. Then that ten thousand gives you perfection. So whatever you're trying to do, even if you never knew how to backflip, you start out with a cartwheel, and eventually you keep doing it. You're gonna know how to backflip. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. I agree. Well, I want to thank Oba for coming in today and giving us so much information. And before I go over, I want to give you, I want you to give your last words um, as well as anything you, um, all your social media, anything you have um, you want to share for people to be able to um, know about your platform and the different things you have going on. All right. Uh, I, I, would, I would just reiterate what I said about discipline and doing something every, do, do it every day. If, if you overweight, do a push up. If you can do one, do one. That one turn to two, that two turn to four, four turn to eight, then it's going to keep on going. And it's like that with every single thing. And that's how it happened with me with social media. I'm like, okay, let me try it. Let me, let me try this, this thing out. Let me, I, I just want to share knowledge with people. I'm, I'm, I've been reading, I've been doing it. I've been using this for myself and I want to see everybody else on. And I remember doing it, 10 views five views then it go up to 200 back down to 10 next you know a thousand back down to 20 next year i go viral and then it just kept going and going and going until i had hundreds of thousands of followers doing what i doing what i do so saying that follow me on social media on my instagram which is over the great i think it's over the great um that's my instagram um my TikTok is over the great barbarian and with that, I actually have a playlist called How to Crypto, which is one minute videos teaching you exactly what I just said here, slower, <laughs> slower and you repeat it. And it's one minute videos. It's not any free. And I'm making sure everything is free. I don't got no paywall or anything. I don't have no paywall for that. The only paywall I have is if you want to have personal consultations, if you want one on one, you want help, you like, hey, man, what's this or what's that? I have a paywall bag because I can't I can't talk to a hundred thousand people, y'all. <laughs> I can't I can't. So um so also my my um my Facebook. So I said not my Facebook, my YouTube. My YouTube is um over the great. And on my YouTube, I actually started a, a new show. The first episode came out yesterday of me taking these articles and what's going on in the fine finance finance world and I'm basically becoming CNBC. Bloomberg for us. So when they use all this extra vo vocabulary that, you know, most of us don't understand, I, I take that and I break it down and I speak in our language of how we, how we see what's going on. I ain't, I ain't, I'm not trying to use big word to confuse you to say, Hey, I'm smarter than y'all. We ain't, we ain't finna do all that because we need to know what's going on. So I take these articles and I break it down. The first episode came out yesterday. I have another one coming out tomorrow. So Every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, there will be a new episode of Barbarian Empire News where I take this finance, I take world news, I take tech, and I, and I break it down and explain it to you every single day. All right, all right, man. So just to wrap up, first of all, you heard everything he's got. And, and one of the reasons why I reached out to Ova is because I actually follow Ova. And, it's, and I haven't started. I've been following him for a while. And he's helped me personally just watching his videos learning as i was um getting going and delving into cryptocurrency and i just love how he breaks things down and so i reached out to him and i'm so glad he said yes he would come on and definitely you know speak to everybody here in the audience um so definitely not only does he have overwater not only does he have merchandise he has like say the barbarian empire definitely so on mondays wednesdays and he got the merch. He also has NFTs. So don't, we, we we didn't touch on that today, but definitely had the NFTs. And also he's an artist. We didn't get a chance to touch on his music, but definitely check out his music as well, because I know you had a song, Statue of Limitations. You have XRP. He actually brings finance into his music and uh, in a way that is just philosophical. Psych like it's, it's just so many. We're, we're, making it, we're, we're, we're at least trying to make it sound cool and not corny. Like, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh man, he rapping all fine. It might be corny. Like, nah, we making it. You know what I mean? I'm still, I'm still, I'm still talking that talk in there. You know, yeah, y'all want to hear that? It's in there. All of it's in there. 
Definitely, definitely. Because I mean, he even said, and I think in the song XRP Web Three Trapping, like, like <laughs> he, he relates it so that you can understand it. He breaks it down for us to understand, and that's the beautiful thing about um, the way he relays messages and, and helps is helping all of us gain that financial mindset. So I wanted to thank you for taking the time to sit down with me. Definitely going to have you back to talk more finance. Um, and like say, you guys check out his social media pages. Be on the lookout for that overwater. It's going to be on Amazon 60 days. Definitely, like say, the NFTs, the merch, his, uh, his shows, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, over the great. Thank you so much. As I always say, love and light, you guys. Have a wonderful night. Thank you guys for tuning in. All right, y'all. All right. One second before you, uh, before we click off, um, just for the promo part at the end, um, just say, you know, however you want to say it, your name and thank you for tuning in the prescription or whatever, or this is the prescription, whatever, however you want to say it, you just say that. So I can make sure I can pull that clip out to, uh, right. for the promo. What's up y'all. It's over the great. And thank you for tuning in to the prescription. All right. All right. Thanks. Oba. How, how did you feel? How do you feel? <laughs> how do you think, um, 